Our Heavenly Father, we come today on this great special day. It's not just the Lord's Day, it's not just your day, but Father, it's the day where we celebrate your Son coming back from the dead. Lord, we are blessed to be Christians. We are blessed and thrilled to be here today or at home worshiping. And Father, we just pray that as we, we celebrate today, you would revive our hearts and bring her into a, us into a closer and deeper relationship with you. Thank you, Father, so much for your blessings. Thank you for this special day. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. And now in these quiet moments, here are our personal prayers. And now, Father, here's as we pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. He looked at him and saw a simple man. A carpenter with healing in his hands. They saw him come to see and heal a dying man. They saw, but could they really understand? They could not, they could not, though they tried, they could not. He was just a simple carpenter with healing in his hands. But did they really? Understand, they could not, they listened to the teachings that they heard and wondered at the mystery of his words. They he meant about a father's plan they heard but could they really understand they could not they they 
concerned about those notes having to be seated some of the time but I think bending her body did her just as good as if it was straight <laughs> hear the word of God on this resurrection Sunday from the gospel of John the 20th chapter early on the first day of the week while it was still dark Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stripes of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him. And cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and said to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he, what he had said, these things to her. 
all those who know that this is God's word, say amen. Amen, amen. and amen. We want to celebrate today with the declaration of our faith, and uh, we're doing that with the Apostles' Creed that you know so well. We celebrate today with Christians around the world, uh, Catholics, Protestants, and we also believe in the Catholic Universal Small C Church. So we'd like to stand to affirm our faith at this time with the Apostles' Creed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is a one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now reverently and sincerely declare. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he arose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our prayer list is printed in your bulletin, if you'll turn with me. And I will highlight some of our situations here, here in the church. Um, again, I continue to thank you for your prayers. I keep going to therapy three times a week. Another few months, you won't even recognize me, you know, so and that's a blessing. Um, and... Bonnie's continuing her therapy, uh, so she has a few more weeks to be going, so we'll continue to pray for her. Uh, Gil Roberts is still in um, Twining Village. Uh, that's the old name. I don't know the new name, but we want to continue to remember Gail in our prayers. Um, still re remembering Steve Schmuda in our prayers and his wife, Karen. Um, they couldn't be here today, they told me, uh, with a leg infection. Um, just like to highlight some more additions. Um, Linda Jones, we want to remember in our prayers, um, she had some pretty hefty uh, cancer surgery on her face, so we want to remember her in our prayers. Sue Munns, we're continuing to remember Sue. Is she coming along pretty well? She's coming in safely. Oh, great, great. So we want to continue to remember. Um, uh, Donald Anderson is having some uh, more testing this week, so we want to, or is it this week? I, another week. So we want to continue to remember him in our prayers. We've added uh, Gwen uh, Gatowski with health concerns and some family situations with her sister-in-law, so we want to remember in our prayers. Um, we're praying for Manny Pouquet going through some testing. Um, Joan Thomas is going to have her knee replaced Tuesday, so our prayers are with Joan. Um, we've added uh, Vivian Stoner uh, to our prayer list. Millie Eschmont's daughter's mother-in-law, she's 91 and fell and was in intensive care. So we want to remember her. Um, we added Jim Cunningham to our prayer list. Um, Jim is having some major health problems and is in St. Mary's right now. So we, we want to remember uh, Jim in our prayers. Um, I want to thank you. You know, we put on um, uh, the prayer list uh, the other week, Palm Sunday, last week, uh, Nathan Real. Uh, Nathan is a 16-year-old um, that his parents own the farmer's market, uh, own the, the bakery in the farmer's market. His dad is the manager of the farmer's market, and they're an Amish family, and I've befriended them over the years. And remember, Nathan was run over by a truck on old Philadelphia Pike, uh, broke himself loose from the truck, sat on the side of the road, um, answered his cell phone when uh, the truck driver said, where are you? I've um, 20 some stitches here, then 40 here, jaw sewed shut. And so I st stopped at the farmer's market yesterday and he was there working with his family. He said he couldn't stay home. He said to the doctor, can I go back to work? You know, 
Now, that's a 16-year-old. When you're this age, I say, oh, how long can I take off, you know? But there's something about that, you know? And so he said, oh, oh one day I got all these cards from Newtown. And he sa I said to my parents, oh, why, what are all these uh, envelopes? He was reading the return address, Newtown, Newtown. Well, about 20 of you sent him get well cards. And so he, they really appreciate it. So next week, uh, we'll, we'll give you his address again in case you want to follow up. But So we want to remember him. And we're also going to be praying for uh, George a little later in the service, George Cook, with some problems. And um, so I think that's our prayer concerns, okay? So if you have any, never hesitate to call the office. Next week's bulletin is already printed, but we usually need things for the bulletin by Wednesday. Um, so that's why this prayer list is a little outdated that's printed. It was printed weeks ago. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful and grateful that we could be here today. Lord, we're, we're so thankful that we can come and praise your name and lift your name on high, Father. You are our, our God our deliverer, our friend, what, what more could we ask for? Father, you're with us through the good times. You're with us through the difficult times. Lord, you never leave us or forsake us, and we are blessed to be believers today. Father God, we're grateful for anyone or persons that uh, told us about the saving knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, we're grateful that someone was burdened to let us personally know that Jesus Christ came, was born, lived, died, rose from the dead to give us life eternal. Father, we confess our sins. Sometimes we're just not what we should be. But Lord, we're thankful that we are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to do the things that you want us to do and not do the things that you don't want us to do. Help us, Father, in every way to become more Christ-like, more godly, and more in tune to the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we want to thank you also for your many, many blessings. You've blessed us and blessed us. And, Lord, how can we say thank you? I guess the best way we can say thank you is to live our lives totally dedicated to you and the kingdom of God. Put a burden on our hearts, Father, to be more committed, more committed to you, more willing to serve, more willing to give, Lord. Help us to be people that are 100% sold out to the cause of Jesus Christ. Father, um, we continue to pray for America. We continue to pray for our state. We continue to pray for our capital. We continue to pray for those in leadership above us and in, in political situations. Lord, many of us really believe our country is a mess right now. And Lord, we need you. We need you so much. We pray that you would send a revival to the United States of America. We pray that you would revive the churches, revive the individual membership. Revive our hearts, Father. And Lord, put a burden on our hearts to share the gospel of Christ in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our state, our country, and around the world. Lord, we are blessed to be believers, and we thank you for that. Lord, we tend to come to you so often with requests and we don't mean to keep asking you for things all the time, but we know that if we ask not, we may not receive. And we know that even in our asking, Father, we're very, very grateful for what you've already done for us and already given us. But we pause in these quiet moments on this Easter Sunday to lift up those people that we know and love. We pray for um, those that are recovering from situations. 
We pray that you'd be with Bonnie and just help her recover in her time of need. Be with Gail. Be with Stephen Karen, Father. We pray that, Lord, you would be with Vivian as she recovers from her fall. We pray that your healing hand will be with Linda Jones and you would touch her. Be with Sue Munns and bring her back to good health. We pray for Donald Anderson, Lord, that you might continue to be with him in the whole healing process. We pray, Father, for Gwen Gatowski and her health and some of her family situations. Lord, we, we pray for Jim Cunningham that, that you would touch him right now and heal his body. We pray for Joan Thomas as she goes in for knee replacement. We pray that you would give her the peace that passes all understanding and your healing power would touch her. We pray for Manny that you would continue to, to be with him in his time of need. Lord, we pray for Nathan that you'd be with him as he recovers from this horrific accident. We pray, Lord, that you would <clears throat> touch him, continue to heal his body, Father, continue to do a work in his life. Lord, be with those that are going through grief, um, that's going through any difficult times right now. And Lord, we just pray that we would individually let the world know that we are believers and that, Father, that we would be used to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for hearing all these our prayers. For it's in Christ's name that we pray and his people said, amen and amen.
Well, we do welcome you to our service today. It's good to have you worshiping with us. We ask that you sign the ritual of Christian friendship, the pad that the ushers are distributing at this point, or maybe they gave them out already. I wasn't paying attention. Um, so we ask that you sign and let us know that um, you are worshiping with us today. Um, once again, we remind you um, this week is different than last year this time. Uh, because our country had just sort of shut down. And uh, then two years ago, this, this is different, but we're, we're um, thankful that this is not gonna be the new norm because we are coming back and we're grateful to see all of you, especially here today and hope you feel safe. I uh, wanna thank you for wearing your mask um, uh, when you're walking throughout the facility. And um, so uh, it's, it's most certainly Good to see all of you with us today. We had a, a nice uh, gathering worship service one D Thursday. We had 70 people. And of course, last week was Palm Sunday and there was like 145 people here. And um, so my, my goal today was 200. Did we get 200? What did we get? 165. Ugh, that's okay. That's okay. I was watching. Um, I was watching a mass today at the Basilica in Rome, and uh, they were being very positive with hope, and you know. And yet, the one commentator who seemed like a great Christian Catholic man um, said, "But it's still so disappointing, no matter how you look at it. Um, the the square holds three hundred thousand people." And I don't, th I don't think there was anybody on the square. And uh, the actual basilica where the Pope was, w was very empty, um, you know, in, in the section he was at even. So anyway, things are a little different, but they're changing. We're getting back to things. I would like to encourage you um, to um, get a shot in the arm or two shots in the arm and uh, then get back back to church on a regular basis. And so um, God has been good to us, but we're trying to hope make you feel safe and you that are home will keep live streaming forever and ever and ever. So that can be good, but that can be bad. Um, but anyway, so it's, it's most certainly good to see you. I'd just like to share a few announcements with you. Um, the church office will be closed tomorrow, uh, so please note that. If you have any needs, you can always call me at home or on my cell number. Don't call my home number. I don't even know what it is. So I usually don't even answer it, uh, you know, because it's usually some kind of thing, person selling me something. So call me on my cell number if you want me to really answer the phone. Um, we, we are grateful to everyone who's made the holidays possible from sets you notice this year our sets a little abbreviated but we wanted to still get the message out uh, we had our donkey friends here last week and now we have the sheep for the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world um, someone told me they were watching last week and s saw the two donkeys and i said that wasn't nice for you to call bonnie and me donkeys but that's okay but She's sitting right there. I'm pointing at her. Okay. Um, so, so, so anyway, so we have Palm Sunday and, of course, Monday, Thursday. Good Friday, we had a clipping devotional, if you saw it, um, on, the, uh, on your website. Your, um, and then, of course, today. So, and we will continue. And our goal is by September, the fall, to get back to everything. Wednesday nights, Bible studies, we're getting back. So get your shot and get ready to go, okay? Um, but anyway, it's good to see you. So we thank everyone that has made the holidays possible uh, so that we can still be richly blessed. <clears throat> this is my fault. I didn't tell the ushers. Um, I have it here. If you bought a plant, um, 
there's a, a booklet that says who the flowers are in honor of or memory of, and I don't know if you saw the two distinctions. So if you didn't get this booklet and you'd like to look through it and see who the plants are in honor or memory of, and if you bought an Easter plant, please feel free uh, to take it home with you. So uh, there's a little less this year, I guess, because some of you just weren't around to think about it, um, but um, the folders are are on the back there. So please note that. Remember, Adult Sunday School starts uh, again next week. Choir rehearsals start again. So if you like to be in the choir, the choir's been great. We, um, you know, we've had a solid 16 um, since the virus. We started with five and then worked our way up. Uh, we usually have 40 at the holidays. So it's time to get back. It's time to get back. I, we have to listen to the government, but we also have to listen to the Father. And, um, you know, if we can go to the grocery store and go here and go here, we can come in church and sit in a corner and feel the presence of God. So anyway, I want to remind you of a few things. Um, the bookstore, sale at the bookstore, because you came today, it's Easter. If you bought something the other days, don't be mad at me. All the Easter product is 75% off. 75% <laughs> off. It'll be that way for a week, and then it gets put away. The rest of the store is still 60% off. If you can prove that something in the store seems Eastery, and you can prove that to the cashier, she'll give you 75% off. <laughs> Someone came in from the public outside um, and said, oh, are you, are you going out of business? Because of the sale. No, we're just nice people. <laughs> we're nice people. So um, so stop in afterwards. And then um, we wanted to do something to make you happy. I don't know. I always like these little tracks. I think they're so cool. If you didn't get this in your bulletin, look on the floor. Because it probably <laughs> fell through, okay? So they're the cutest little things. And when you leave today, we're going to give you an Easter present. Um, you, but to get it, you have to go out that door because, you know, we do have enough anyway. I, we only had like 200, so I, I was worried if we had more than 200 people. Um, so the ushers will give you a little pocket uh, um, token you can carry in your pocket. It's a sheep and a cross, and it says, Behold the Lamb of God, so you can remember. And then something that you can't go wrong with. This is a Hershey's chocolate cross. So, you know, when things are tough, the cross is the best thing. You add chocolate to it, and you've got it made. So go out that door, and the ushers will give you a cross and a token. And uh, we wish you a blessed holy day and a blessed Easter, because he is risen from the dead. I think that's everything. So I think at this time, we have the privilege of presenting unto the Heavenly Father his tithes, your offerings, and your Easter offerings. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the joy of giving. And we pray now that you bless these tithes and offerings and Easter offerings that we might continue to spread the gospel of the risen Christ around the world. Bless the gift and the giver alike. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creature here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain standing as we sing low in the grave, Eli.
their dearest friend. All that he said, but now he was dead. So this was the way it would end. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a, 
George would come over, uh, many of you know, like, it seems that, uh, I don't know, Satan sometimes works in very horrible ways. I have not been well, then Bonnie didn't get well on Thursday um, before service. Um, George had a stroke in the eye and called us up and said he couldn't be at service because um, it's your left eye, it's been blinded. And uh, so he was at Will's and um, they're doing what they can do and God's going to do what he can do. And uh, George from Will's, I think he put the devotion on the computer for us. Um, and, uh, and so I said, I don't know if you're going to sing today. And he said, well, of course, that's commitment. And so we wanted to pray for George. We want to anoint him with oil. Um, this is the instructions for our prayer time. If you'd like to come up and put your hand on him, you're more than welcome to do that if you're wearing a mask. Um, if not, we're going to have you all stand and uh, just put your hands forward. And let's pray and ask God to do a mighty miracle. So those that want to come forward are welcome. Okay. He said for COVID and he so um, Okay, if you lift your hands. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you today knowing that you're a great and wonderful God, and you're a great healer. You touch people, you heal lives, you bring us back to life. Lord, we come on behalf of George. We thank you, Father, for his faith, his commitment to Christ, his commitment to the church, to music in the church, to the sound system. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would touch him, touch his eye, heal his eye, bring him back to total wholeness, Father. We just pray that, Lord, in this whole process, and we know that he will, give you the honor and the glory, Lord. And may people be brought closer to you because of his faith and his testimony. But God, you know us as humans, we'd really like to see him healed and be totally well again. So we ask that you do this. In Christ's name we pray, and his people said, Amen. 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 Do you want to say anything? Here, here's a mic. I'd just like to uh, thank everyone for uh, all the texts, the cards, the phone calls, the well wishes. It's, it's been a difficult week. Uh, my sister and I buried our mother Wednesday um, after a long, lengthy illness. Um, they had been through a lot. Um, and uh, going through that on Wednesday, and you think, okay, now it's time to heal. Thursday was fine. I got my new glasses Thursday morning. And uh, Thursday night getting ready to come here, uh, all of a sudden they shut the lights off. Uh, it's a little scary. There's people with much worse things to deal with, I know. Uh, this is an adjustment period. And I take it that I'd like to think that it's because I'm close enough to Jesus that Satan needs to mess with me. Um, on the other hand, it could just be that I, I do a lot here. Yes, I do. And, but maybe I'm missing a point somewhere and God wanted my attention. You have it. 100%. Um, Will's eye at uh, Jefferson Neurological Stroke Unit. Um, the staff was excellent. Um, I've had more tests than I care to. In a very short time, everything came back negative except this for some reason, and that's a good thing. Uh, now their concern is to just keep me healthy enough that that doesn't happen again on the other side. Um, so at this point, uh, what the doctors have done is done. Uh, uh, one of the, one of the uh, 
neurologist said, well, you have in, in a year's time a zero to 100% chance of getting something back. Um, the ophthalmologist just simply said, I don't want any false hope. Uh, people don't usually recover from this. Either way, the Lord will get me through this. I will adapt, I will adjust, and we will keep moving forward, and we will praise God for everything he's done for us. And I just, again, thank you, everyone, for all your support. Appreciate it. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, George. George is faithful with the assembly and has been very instrumental in getting our system going and works with the orchestra. And uh, I think maybe you could covet that every time you pray in these days that you could pray for his healing. You know, we all say strange things at times, don't we? We all say things sometimes that after we said them, we thought, why did I say that? Well, about 35 years ago, it's probably been, I said something like really strange. Um, I was counseling a lady. I was at the Washington Crossing Church, the small church, and uh she was having many, many problems. She was just young in her 30s, um, had mainly a drinking problem. And uh, she was married and uh, lived in the same property with her in-laws. Um, and so I spent a lot of time with her because she'd always call me when she had her needs. And um, I went on a youth retreat uh, one weekend and came back and we were unloading the bus, and I was in the fellowship hall at the church, and a call came in, and it was uh, Mrs. Schwartz um, from Schwartz Funeral Home, um, her husband and son, Quirky, uh, run the funeral home. It's right in Newtown here, and Mrs. Schwartz said, Pastor Levy, and I said, yes. She said, oh, I'm just calling to inform you that, that Mrs. So-and-so died. So... Since her mother-in-law was in her 80s, I thought she meant the mother-in-law. And um, I was like, I started talking like this was an older woman that died. And she said, oh, no, um, you, you have me wrong. It's the young, the daughter-in-law that died this weekend. And so I was, sh I was really shocked. So I said to her without thinking, You've got to be kidding me. Mrs. Schwartz, the wife of the funeral director and mother of one, said, you know, usually when we call people, we're usually not kidding with them. <laughs> well, I will carry that to my grave because I thought, oh, my gosh, that's really true. You, what do you say to a funeral director when they say someone's past? Oh, this, you've got to be joking. Well... Today is like one of those type of weird days where many people in today's world are saying the same thing. For example, let me, let me tell you, like um, I say, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And some of the world is saying, you've got to be kidding me. Or I might say, the tomb was empty. And then your response might be, you've got to be kidding me. Or they couldn't find his body. you got to be kidding me. Or Jesus Christ must have been the son of God that take us away the sin of the world. You have got to be kidding me. You know, now I'm sure that you're sitting here today and you're, you're not even going to think that. I'm sure that you're sitting here or listening at home and uh, you know that Jesus rose from the dead today, and you believe that, and it's not an issue of, oh, Jesus rose from the dead. you got to be kidding me. You believe it. It's like the man and his five-year-old son were driving past the cemetery and noticed a large pile of dirt um, next to um, a freshly dug grave. And the little boy said to his father, look, Dad, one got out. Well, I'm telling you, one got out that we know for sure. 
you know, we travel all, all over the world, don't we, to see great, um, great places of burial. For example, if some of you went with us in Israel, one of our trips, a couple of them, we went to Egypt, and we just loved seeing the pyramids in Egypt because they're famous for the mummified bodies of the ancient Egyptian kings that were kept there. Maybe you've been to Westminster Abbey in London, and it's renowned for the resting place of the bodies of the English nobles. Maybe you've been to Mohammed's tomb, and Noted the stone coffin and the fact that his bones are inside. Maybe the Taj Mahal is a memorial to one of the wives of the leaders. Maybe you've been to Arlington Cemetery and you've uh, revered those that we've respected that gave their lives. Or maybe you don't have to go to Arlington. Maybe you just need to go to Washington Crossing, Pennsylvania. Um, well... Many people go to the garden tomb where it's famous because that's where Jesus was buried, but it's empty. It was emptied on that third day. You know, but there's many skeptics today that don't really believe this thing of Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Now, lots of people, because there's lots of historical facts that will prove this, and they might believe in his trial. They might believe in his crucifixion. They, someone might believe in his burial because there's great historical facts to support it. We might believe that the tomb was guarded, that the tomb was sealed, um, but many people that even believe those facts do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. The tomb was empty. Are you kidding me? You believe that? You really believe that this guy was killed and came to life and rose again and ascended into heaven as we just said in the Apostles' Creed, and is coming again for you and I and his church. Do you really believe that? Well, yes. I believe it. And I'm sure you believe it. But you know, there's some people that don't, and, and there's a few different theories about Christ's death. I thought I'd just review them for you. Many of you know them. Um, there's the swoon theory about his death. And this was a German theologian, Paulus, in 1828, who had little regard for the Bible to be the word of God, even though he was a theologian, um, merely said that Jesus fainted in pain and he swooned and was buried alive. Even though Jesus was beaten to shreds, he was weak with his torture, he was... Um, not much left to him as far as his health. And uh, the swoon theory says he was put in the tomb and the tomb, the dampness of the tomb revived him and he got out of the tomb. Well, a lady once wrote a note to her conservative preacher friend and he said, my preacher last Sunday um, said that on Easter, Jesus just swooned on the cross. The disciples nursed him back to health, and that's the way it is. And so her conservative preacher friend sent her a note back. Uh, dear, dear sister, I tell you what I want you to do. Don't you people do this. Beat your preacher with a leather whip for 39 heavy strokes. Nail him to a cross. Hang him in the sun for six hours. Run a spear through his heart, embalm him, put him in an airless tomb for three days, see what happens. <laughs> the swoon theory by theologians is stupid. The swoon. Now, there's another theory about this resurrection thing, you know. It's called the hallucination theory. These are actual theories. I didn't make these up. And the hallucination theory asserts that the many people that saw Jesus in his post-resurrection appearances, they were just having hallucinations. And um, 
Science tells us, though, that generally people that have hallucinations are usually paranoid, schizophrenic, or under the influence of drugs. Um, but it's thought that they were just hallucinating. <laughs> Jesus came out of the tomb and rose from the dead and is making these, these appearances. Well, the conclusion here is hallucinations usually don't cause people to change or create new beliefs. The fact that so many people said they saw Jesus, believed in him, touched his wounds, refuted this theory because they changed their lives. And in the last scripture reading where Jesus appears, he appeared to 500 people. And, and authorities tell us if 500 people could have the exact same hallucination, that's a greater miracle than the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, I know you might live with some people that hallucinate. Um, just keep telling them that uh, Jesus really did rise from the dead. So we have a swoon theory, the hallucination theory, two more. The conspiracy theory. This is the theory that they said the disciples got together and just dreamed up a way to rescue Jesus and to tell a whole different story and event. And they conspired together as a group. Now, there's 12 disciples. Come on. They conspired together as a group. Chuck Colson, do you know Chuck Colson? You know him if you're old. And uh, you knew Richard Nixon, who was a president. Well, Chuck Colson, during the Watergate scandal in 1960s, was eventually arrested for his part in the scandal and the conspiracy. And um, he later became a Christian, wrote a great book. But it's an old book now. But, and Chuck Colson said this, I know how impossible it is for a group of people, even some of the most powerful in the world, to maintain a lie. The Watergate cover-up lasted only a few weeks because the first conspirator broke and turned state's evidence. So he's saying there's no way there could be a conspiracy with these 11 disciples that were left because someone would break, something would happen, and it just wouldn't work. So you have some people saying Jesus swooned. Some people saying, oh, it's just a ghost. We were, <laughs> they're hallucinating. Some people say that the disciples were smart enough to get a conspiracy going and, and break into the tomb and steal Jesus' body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's another theory. And this theory is what we call the resurrection theory. This is why you are here today. If you believe in the conspiracy theory about the re resurrection of Jesus Christ, the swoon theory, the hallucination theory, you need to immediately make an appointment with me in the office. <laughs> then I might have to deliver you from the demons of hell, and then we'll go from there. But if you look at these other theories, they don't make sense. But the resurrection theory says that Jesus really did die physically the resurrection theory explains why the tomb was empty and a body was never produced if you wanted in biblical days to prove that jesus didn't rise from the dead all you had to do was find his body nobody could or the romans would have the sanhedrin would have the jews would have but you see no one could find his body because he literally rose from the dead. The resurrection theory explains why the disciples became convinced that they had seen Jesus. Because it all fit for them. Do you know, even with the detail of today's scripture, how his linens were laid that covered his face. <laughs> if you were going... To go up to Washington Crossing, my parents are buried uh, in the church cemetery up there, and my sister, and want to dig them up and uh, get out fast, you probably would do it a little sloppily. You wouldn't probably fold neatly the grave clothes and everything and look neatly. You'd be like, oh, the Washington Crossing police could come here any minute, and we got to get out of here. I'm telling you. The resurrection theory and belief that Christ rose from the dead bodily changed lives. Changed lives. 
So, why are you here? We have these sections here. Um, I could put you in different sections. Those who believe in swooning, you sit here. Those hallucinating, you sit here. Um, and then we could go right on. And where should we put? This looks like a nice section. You could be the resurrection section. Those that believe that he was really resurrected, that theory. Um, I'm here today to tell you that um, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth. You know the three years that he ministered, that he suffered. And you certainly know and should know that he died rose from the dead for you and for me. When we look at the first Corinthians, we see that Paul says, and if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. I'm telling you, if this is a myth, if this is a lie, can the faith stuff, can the commitment stuff, because you have to believe that that's the critical part, the foundation for our faith as Christians. That's just the way it is. We believe that. You say, Norman, don't be tough on me. It's Easter. I'm anxious to get that chocolate cross and eat it apart. <laughs> we have to believe that Christ rose from the dead. Now, I just want to give you a couple proofs to substantiate our theory. Number one, the tomb was empty. The tomb was empty. Um, if you buried a loved one, you went to the cemetery few, two days later, and um, the hole was dug up. There was no casket, no body. What would you start thinking? Well, maybe he swooned. Maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe... Um, maybe someone stole him, a conspiracy. Maybe it was a miracle and he raised or she raised from the dead. One of the proofs of the resurrection is that the tomb was empty. I've told this story before because I think of it every Easter. So if you've heard this, don't tell anybody the ending of this story. Um, one, one, another trip to Israel. One of my favorite, I have two favorite places when we go. My Jewish favorite site is the Wailing Wall. I love the Western Wall. And my second is the Christian site, or that's my top Jewish site. My top is the Garden Tomb. I love the Garden Tomb. So I remember we had a free day one day, and our guides was in the lobby saying, oh, you have a free shopping day tomorrow, do what you want. And so he looked at me, and he said, oh, Norm, what? What are, what are you doing tomorrow? And our, our guide's Jewish. I said, well, I, I think I'm going to go to the garden tomb because uh, I like to go there without a crowd of people, meditate, be there by myself, the, and go in the empty tomb. And uh, so I, you try. So I said, do you want to go with me? Like, I mean, he hasn't been there 8,000 times. And uh, so I said, David, do you, you want to go with me? And he said, why would I go there? No one's there. You talk about a message to turn a preacher on. I said, that's the whole point. That's why I'm going there. You see, the tomb is empty. That's the whole point. The tomb was empty. A second proof that uh, this was a miraculous thing were the main witnesses, the first were women. If you were making up a great conspiracy story in biblical days, the woman would not be any way connected to the hero. Women were low class in biblical days, not thought anything. They couldn't even appear in court. So if we were making this story up about Jesus rising from the dead, you would not say the ladies went to the tomb. Now, I don't want any letters from you, Libbers or whatever. Uh, I can't even keep up with all the different groups there are. I didn't say this. I'm just repeating it. I didn't make it up. So the fact that Mary and the Marys and the ladies went to the tomb was absolutely proof. Because otherwise, if it was a made-up thing, they would have said the men went to the tomb. But it was the ladies were the first eyewitnesses. How do we know that this really was something miraculous? 
um, the apostles were changed. They were changed. The lives. They went from these creepy little guys hiding in bushes when Jesus was arrested to, oh my gosh, change the world. They were changed. James was changed. You remember then other people were changed. Paul saw on his way to prosecute Christians and he met Jesus, the risen Christ, on the road. And his life was literally changed. Most of these disciples, I said that this, this thing here, it's, it's only my second time wearing it. And, you know, I have such fragile ears. They're tiny. And every time I move my butt or sit on the chair, it pulls the thing off. So that's what I'm fiddling with. It's brand new. Sometimes old is good. Um, then we see throughout scriptures the large amount of witnesses at Jesus' post-resurrection appearances. Forty days he appeared. The scriptures tell us not all of his appearances were written down. And then we see that most of the disciples died martyrs' deaths. Not only did they die martyrs' deaths, uh, but many people even today, the persecuted church, are dying because the tomb was empty and Christ rose from the dead. You know, what, what about today? You know what you, what you and I need to do? We need to know that our faith is grounded in an historical empty tomb. We need to know that our faith should be grounded in the risen Savior. We need to know that we need to believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ and be able to tell the world about that. Because the world is so, so off-center when it comes to the empty tomb. I sinned this week, and I'm going to confess. So you can all be my priests. So don't tell a soul what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so remember Thursday night I preached how we need to love everybody? The whole Monday Thursday thing is love. We, we just need to love everybody. So yesterday... I had to do, get some Easter candy. So it's tough because I look for an electric cart. Well, you know, Super Walmart down there in the Levittown area. Um, it's huge. It's like, you know, three city blocks. Well, I got there at uh, five of seven when they opened. There was a line. And I think the whole store, they must have four electric carts. They were all gone that fast. Well, one was left. Bonnie was with me. She got, I said, Bonnie, you take this one. I can push a shopping cart and just sort of drags me along. So halfway through the shopping, someone returned an electric cart. So now I had an electric cart. Well, let me tell you, there's nothing better than those electric carts. And, I, you know, I've told the Lord, if he heals me totally, completely, my legs, and I can run again, I will always carry a cane with me. Because do you get respect with the cane? So I have my cane. I have the electric car. I'm going up and down the candy aisle, you know, and the staff is putting, can't, rearranging, and they have their carts in the aisle. So I'm going down, trying to be polite at all times, and this man sort of cuts right in front of me. He's walking in front of the end of the aisle with the Zittner Easter eggs. So he's trying to decide which ones he wants. So I'm sitting there in my cart and sitting there and I'm thinking, I think he knows I'm here, but I don't think he wants to be in a hurry. So I nicely said to him in the spirit of Easter, <laughs> um, sir, uh, could you just step aside so I can just get by? All I had to do was take two steps and go back. So he said, no, you can just wait like I had to wait with that attitude. Well, thank God I don't carry a slingshot. <laughs> so I'm like, excuse me? 
you can just wait, and when I'm done, then you can get by. So this is the confession part. So in the spirit of Christ, I said to him, the problem is you're just a big old jerk. You know, I was thinking worse. I said, you're just a big old jerk. I thought, I'm here trying to buy Easter candy for people. And you're, you know, so I said, you're, you're a big old jerk. And so he said, what'd you say to me? I said, you're a big old jerk. Well, this other customer's coming down the aisle. And he says, um, you know, you think it should be a season of love. I thought it was one of you all that was here Thursday night. And I thought, I've been caught. Because I'm talking about loving everybody. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then, so he says, it's Easter. You think someone would be kind enough, kind enough, and, um, or if, the, if they weren't, he said something to you, just knock their head off them. And he was talk, talking to the, my enemy, and it's standing right next to him. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Now, in the midst of this conversation now that's growing, it's getting... There was lots of F-bombs, not by me. <laughs> so I'm sitting there in this electric chair. Well, electric car it was. <laughs> so now, now they're arguing in front of the Zittnerags. And I can't go anywhere. And so, and so um, finally the guy was done. And he said something back to me. And I said, you know, you're just a jerk. And so the other guy starts yelling at him again on my side. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh. So then I'm getting ready to go this direction. Well, the, the Zittner egg duck guy, he's going the same direction as I am. So he says, take off your mask. I mean, I think he was offering me out for a fight. I'm not too sure. Take off your mask. And I thought, I'm a little old crippled man in this chair. It's Easter. What are you doing? You know, I'm thinking to myself. So then I kept bumping into the other guy throughout the store, and he kept reliving this whole experience because he was enjoying having this fight with this other guy. And I thought, well, I don't know who you're buying these eggs for, but you're really missing the point of the empty tomb. This is, like, horrible. Well, I felt so badly because I usually don't get in those kind of fights or call. Who in here have I ever called a jerk? Raise your hand. See? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> well, let me tell you. I want to tell you something. There was um, real important on this Easter that that you know what happened, that Christ really did rise from the dead. And you go even beyond the cross, and you go to the empty tomb, and know that he rose beyond a shadow of a doubt to give us eternal life. Um, this French guy was uh, wanted to start a new religion, and it wasn't being very successful. So he wrote to the diplomat statesman in France, uh, Taylor Strad, and he said, um, I'm starting a new religion, and I can't get any converts. And Taylor Strad said to him this, well, this is what I recommend. Get yourself crucified, died, rise on the third day, and then you might get some converts. How true. But the real message of the morning is we go to the tomb. The tomb is empty. And I would say to you one thing today, then you have to make a decision. And I would say this, choose Christ. Choose Christ. You can choose lots of other things in the world. Choose Christ. He loves you. He died for you. He rose from the dead. Choose Christ. You can't go wrong when you choose Christ. I became a Christian in 10th grade. And I haven't been the best Christian some days. Haven't been the worst. I sometimes have said, oh God, like the other day, 
I think, why do I have to be the one that's good all the time? Someday I would just like to say what I feel. But let me tell you, I've done the very best, I could probably do a little better, at trying to realize Christ rose from the dead. He rose for me. I chose him for my life till I die. And now I just have to keep living for him and le living for him. And that's what Easter is all about. Some man had a terrible disease and his muscles weren't work, working very well and he, his voice vocal muscles gave way and he was a Christian believer but his fingers could still move and so um, he wrote a note to his friend saying um, he is risen and then he wrote, it's so hard to know that and not be able to say it. What's worse is someone who can say it and doesn't. He's risen and he loves you and he cares for you and he wants your life. He wants you to choose him and wants you to serve him. But if you do, I'd stay away from Super Walmart in the Levittown area. <laughs> but I would bet you could even go there if you decide to choose Christ as Lord of your life, as your Savior. You remember, when he got out of that tomb, he was doing it for you. He was doing it for you. And you know why the stone is rolled away? The stone is rolled away, not so he could get out, but so that we could get in and see. Choose Christ. Choose Christ. Forget the theories. Choose Christ and the resurrection. Amen and amen. I followed them to the tomb that day and stood at a distance, watching as Joseph of Arimathea wrapped his lifeless body in grave clothes and carried him into the tomb. Jesus, so full of light, was now enveloped by darkness, as if swallowed by the very earth his father created. A massive stone was rolled in front of his tomb, then sealed shut and guarded at Pilate's command. But on the third day, as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the sepulcher, an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled the stone away, saying, He is not here. He is risen, as he said. Go and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead.
the swooning. It's not the hallucinating. It's not the conspiracy. It's the fact that he was resurrected from the dead for you and you and you and you and you. And that's what's so exciting about today. Keep that in your heart and your mind all day long and decide that you're going to choose Jesus Christ your entire life. I'll say he's risen. You do. He's risen indeed three times, soft, medium, louder. He's risen. He's risen indeed. He's risen. And he's risen. He is risen indeed. Go with the blessing of God. Amen.